Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest today, Dr. Thomas Schwartz of Vanderbilt University. We've been talking about the local elections on Thursday, the state election. Now we're going to turn a little bit more to the foreign policy situation and the national situation. Uh, Dr. Schwartz, before we get too much further along, the state of Tennessee Supreme Court has ordered, has has, ruled, has overturned a, a ruling from here in Nashville that allowed everybody in August to vote absentee if they were in fear of the COVID virus. That won't be in effect in November. If the virus flares back up, is Tennessee going to be in danger of maybe having some problems we've seen in other states? Because a lot of other states have changed their laws and changed their court rulings to allow more absentee voting. Might we now see maybe less absentee voting and a less overall turnout if the virus is still spiking when we get into early voting and, and day of voting in November? Yes, I think that's certainly possible. I think the one thing that will not probably trigger as much attention is the fact that uh, our contested races here are largely, uh, we don't have uh, really tightly contested races right now, and the state itself is not a battleground state. So that may lessen the degree to which there's national attention on what, what happens with the court. That doesn't mean that there won't be, I think, a, a great deal of outcry here if, if this is the case and we have a spike in viruses. It just may not attract quite the national attention it would be if we were a battleground state. Trump, President Trump says all this uh, mail-in voting absentee is, is going to be fraught with danger, going to be a lot of fraud going on mm -hmm. and this sort of thing, although he did say this week he thought the early voting in Florida where he votes early uh, by absentee was pretty yes. good. So there's a mixed message there, but is there any real evidence or indication that there is a lot of fraud involved with mail-in voting? There doesn't seem to be, but there does seem to be is, is less the question of fraud than the question of great delays. Uh, this whole question that happened in the New York congressional race where you have uh, postmark, you don't have postmark ballots, so it's, it's a possible not to know whether someone actually mailed it before the election, this sort of thing. Um, it's, it's not, I think the, the issue is less one of fraud than the, than the competence to handle this type of situation and whether it would lead to great delays in certifying the election. This whole idea of delaying the election because of that the president was brought that up and also there's mm -hmm. a concern in early with a lot of the uh, mail-in voting coming because the postal service is already strained and there's some particular right. people believe it might even get worse for November so there seems to be a lot of uncertainty about that. The president bringing up delaying the election nobody seemed to salute that idea is that pretty well dead in the water and why did the president want to bring that up is it an admission that maybe he is worried he's going to lose? I think it is that um, you know the president is a pro, a master at distraction and sometimes dominating the news cycle. That certainly did. It, it was a misfire in many respects because he didn't get any echoes from his Republican supporters or, or others. And it it, it 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 was a classic case of uh, in a way the impulsive nature of Trump's Twitter account, where he uh, will will uh, shoot off something without obviously having it screened very much by his staff. Uh, the president has been looking for an issue, I think, to try to tighten up the race. He seems to be behind in most mm -hmm. of the polling against Joe Biden. Uh, mm -hmm. Is one of those issues going to be China? He's doing this, these executive orders now about TikTok, about some other situations involving Chinese companies that are going to go on the New York stock market, what kind of financial disclosures they're going to make. Is China going to be the big issue in terms of national security and in terms of trying to motivate not just his base, but the rest of the country behind him in November? I do think he's going to focus on China. There will be ads on that, uh, contentions that Joe Biden, uh, whose son uh, has been involved with Chinese companies, is compromised, that he's been weak on China. I don't, it, 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 there is obviously substantial public sentiment has turned more negative toward China. I don't know that in the midst of the virus and the economy and the racial problems that China will rise to the top. I think it's it's certainly going to be there as an issue. It may depend on how the Biden campaign handles it. So far, they have basically said we agree with a tougher stance. So they're not they're not giving him a great target yet on that issue. Uh, normally, presidential campaigns talk about when we started to head towards the fall. What's the October surprise going to be? Is the October mm -hmm. surprise because so many people are going to be voting early this year? Is the October surprise going to have to come in September or maybe even sometime here in August? And what's it most likely to be? What are the candidates for the October surprise? Well, I do think, I mean, there is a problem now. The early voting does make it a little harder to go with the real October surprise uh, the week before the election or something like that to make it uh, matter. My own sense of an October surprise would be a vaccine and a vaccine that promised, that had strong promise, that seemed to do, that it was backed up by Dr. Fauci and by people who are not necessarily seen as Trump supporters. That would be 
a strong indication that the virus is under control. The president would take credit for it because of his warp speed program. And that would that's my candidate for the most likely. There are obviously some other possibilities in terms of foreign policy. Some sort of a clash with China or something like that could also happen. Dr. Thomas Schwartz of Vanderbilt University is our guest on Inside Politics. Back to continue our conversation after this break.